scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Passion in the midst of results or outside of results doesn't make any difference. Oh God, why didn't you heal my mother? Are you really God? And he's looking at you. My CGPA. Lord, I gave my tithe. I'm a tither. And I even gave a seed to, to every man of God that I love. Yet things have not changed. Where are you, oh God? Take away shame from me. Don't let people laugh at me. And God says, that's it. People laugh at you. That's, that's really the object. When you get to a point where it no longer matters, why will you take the shame when you claim you are not taking the glory? Whoever takes the glory should take the shame. So if I claim he is taking the glory, and yet I am so shame conscious something is not adding up why is your reputation such an issue please listen to what I'm telling you I show you a secret to becoming the friend of God it is more than fasting it is more than prayer it is more than Bible study it is coming to a point in your life where you are willing to lose any and everything and yet your passion for him is unchanged. Thank you because the job comes but if it never comes, leaving you is not an option. Thank you because I know you will heal my body but even if I die, the last word that will come out is you are faithful. Come on. Our world, especially our generation, is full of interests. There is hardly the purity of selflessness. What is in it for me? You are my friend because... Are we together? I found out you, are, you know a lot of people. And so I've seen that there is an advantage in being your friend. Provided I can see what I can gain from you. It's amazing how that our pursuits, as spiritual as it is, has already been corrupted by the versatility of the lost tied to it. And so we go for seven days dry. What are you looking for? Lord, what did you give apostle? You will give me. And God starts asking why from day one. You never answer. Just send it, oh God. Why? Why do you want the power? I know why. Because you saw a protocol standing close to a man. Come. It looked good to have people stand. I mean, this huge guy. It looked good to be a celebrity. And you just found out that since I'm not an unbeliever, let me use God to achieve the same result. What is in it for me? The language of our generation. What is in it for me? What do I stand to gain? 
show me my court first and so we carry that bargaining mindset and go to God and say Lord I want to serve you but first oh, let's define it am I going to shine if yes more than who mention the people who will clap for me while I serve you because there are people I need to prove a point to will they be part of them and while that is happening we have the energy to dissipate but the loss will never allow God to be glorified sell all you have take it away from yourself be dissociated from it don't go and store it every time in the Bible a man built a monument and secured his life upon it God called him a fool there was once upon a time a rich man who built barns and put a lot of plenty. Please don't get me wrong. If you think God is not a giver, I will show you that there is a name. The, the giving of God cannot be really received by any man. We don't have what it takes to receive all that he wants to give. So this is by no means promoting a life of mediocrity and failure. Look at those who gave him all. Every time people meet me, the number one prayer is apostle a double portion. And, and there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. I'm sure it comes from a sincere heart. Apostle, this and that. I'm sure some of you while watching Efenathan minister in your mind, just say, I will dust that voice training again. I mean, if this is what it takes, I will go back. And, and you can discern the corruption. Let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. God is not a fool. He is the fountain of wisdom. He must vet the purity of your motive regardless of the accuracy of the activities. While you are doing those spiritual activities, the eye that can penetrate and cut asunder the bones and the marrows, he's watching to see. Can I trust you? If this is his phone, he should be able to collect it without me feeling offended. When I claim this is your phone and collecting it becomes a problem, then something is happening. I have taught again and again that owners are rebels in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we don't own things. When you own anything, you are a rebel. We are stewards, the Bible says. And it says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful the reputation his own the glory his own the fame the lifting are we together john chapter 3 and then verse 29 and 30 something happened in the bible i hope you know that most of the disciples of john became the disciples of Jesus. The disciples of Jesus were formally mentored by John. And when Jesus came, I mean, he was, he was doing a lot. Let, let's start from 28. And some of the loyal disciples who were left were angry. And they said, something is happening here. John, Jesus is outshining you. Are you not concerned? We who are loyal, who have remained with you, fight Jesus, do something. And John replies, ye yourself bear me witness that I said, hmm, I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. 29. He that had the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiced greatly. Have you ever seen marriage? Come, husband and wife, watch this. These people are about to get married. And then while... They are joining them. The, uh, what they call that guy? <laughs> the best man is taking the joining personal. That means we should suspect you. Your joy should be when they say, we now declare you husband and wife. But you are angry that your friend is about to rejoice. Something is wrong. Are you getting the scripture now? Yes. Please give it to us. He said he rejoiced greatly because... The, of the bridegroom's voice this my joy ah, is therefore fulfilled 
May verse 30 become your heritage forever. That he must increase, but I must decrease. Let me tell you what decreasing means. Decreasing does not mean go down. Decreasing means that I shrink to a point that I am now in him. That when they look at me, you know the word decrease there for many of us, it, we think is a bad word. Because we mean get out of the show. That's truly what it means. But then the advantage is that by the time you decrease, God himself will find a way of ensuring that while they focus on him, they still see you. Are we together now? I must decrease. This is, please give us that scripture. This is a language that our generation does not like. We love the spotlight and there's nothing wrong with it. Except for the fact that we are so obsessed with fame and money and things that if it means kicking God out, let it be. I came from a background, you will say, where no one has celebrated me. Lord, this is my moment to shine. Wait outside. Let me enjoy my shining, then I come to you. Many of us came here tonight to receive power, wonderful. To receive miracles, wonderful. To be inspired, wonderful. But tonight God is searching for those who say, these are my reasons, oh God. But even if the reasons are never met, I am still here. Ah, I'm still here. I'm still here. I thought the breakthrough would have come by January. It didn't come, but I'm still here. Lord, I'm not going anywhere. To whom shall we go? You alone have the words of life. I don't have an option. I did not bring plan B when I started with you. It is you or I perish. These are the kinds of people that it will be as though God owes them his presence. They will call upon him and he will arise. He will adorn their lives with beauty and glory that will cause even them to wonder. Praise the Lord. Good master, what is the one thing that is left? You can fast the more, it's excellent. You can pray the more, excellent. You can do all of the things you have to do the more. But my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. Please hear me. None of these things will replace the place of genuine death and dissociation from things. When honor and shame does not mean anything to you. When poverty and wealth does not mean anything to you. When the applauds of men or the mockings of men does not mean anything to you. When all that matters in your life is Christ and Christ alone, you are a dangerous man on the earth. You are the kind of person that Satan cannot do anything about. It is never about accolades. So when God sees that your pursuit is tied to those things, he will give you the same instruction he gave the man. Go. Sell that which gives you a sense of significance when you are left alone come back to me many people never come back they never come back they leave and they go to look for options but like the one leper who was healed there are others who will come back and say master it's all gone the reputation is gone I am willing if need be to trade everything away I stand before you only depending on your grace and your power and your light. If you do not help me, I cannot rise. Whatever you don't give me, I cannot have. If you don't give me a song, I cannot sing. If you don't open my eyes, I cannot see. And God says, do I mean that much to you? He said, Lord, let time prove it. Time prove it. Lord, I need a child greatly, but if a child does not come, you are still God. 
A time will come when your prayer life has no prayer points again. Not because you do not want to pray. You are more concerned about your love for him than your needs being met. That you can go before him and for hours never talk about yourself. It becomes all about him. Lord, I thank you. If you never bless me, you are still God. If you never open a door for me, you are still God. Please listen to what I tell you. Most people continue to use God as a ladder. You were told he's a reliable ladder to achieve greatness. You were told he's a reliable ladder to achieve fame. You are told he's a reliable ladder to marry. A reliable ladder to get a good husband, a good wife. A reliable ladder to get promotion. A reliable ladder to get these things. And you are right, he is. Except that that's not all he is. The Lord put it very strongly in my heart. To challenge us tonight. You will waste your fasting. You will waste your prayer. You will waste your Bible study. You will waste your going to church. You will waste your going, your praying in tongues until your heart becomes like the alabaster box that you carry your entire reputation and put it in that jar and take it to him and not pour small and keep some for later. The Bible says she broke it. No hope of recovery broke it and the entire perfume filled that room and hear what the disciples who were there for reasons that they explained later on what is our court in this following you they were angry and they said madam you are wasting this before him and then they said you would have given it to the poor now lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend Help me find a way Bring me back to you you must sell tonight the one thing I can give God everything except my job I can give God everything except my husband I can give God everything except my anointing I can give God everything except my ministry I can give God everything except my bank account ah, no not 2019 not my bank account I can give God everything except my CGPA I can give God everything except my self-worth it took me so long to build this he had great possession he said go and sell it until you have nothing come to me follow me follow me please hear me nobody follows God full he will empty you on that journey. No matter how you start, he will empty you. He will empty you of your reputation. He will empty you of your intelligence. He will bring you to a point where in your world there is only one name, Jesus. There is only one destiny, God. He becomes Alpha. He becomes Omega. That everything around your life will revolve around him. Most of the sicknesses we have in the world today are caused because we have not laid down everything. 
I bought a car. I'm afraid they may steal it. I worry myself to depression because I think my car of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million. I have a business and I'm not going to let anybody cheat me. It's my sweat. And so I wake up while the keeper of Israel is still awake too. And I depress myself to sleep. My ministry must move forward. Whether God gives me a song or not, I must compose one by myself. And you join things that you waste money and go to the studio and nobody celebrates it. I can tell you where our frustrations come from. They come from the lusts that are connected to our pursuits, even our pursuits of God. There is a loss connected to it and so when it is not satisfied, the lifespan of our passion diminishes completely. People send me, a text, uh, send me text messages all the time and sometimes they say, Apostle, since God hears you talk to him, this thing, if it does not work, whatever he sees, he should take it. On the throne, I got to a point in my life where I said, Lord, I thank you for what you have made me represent to a generation. But I mean it and I mean it from the depth of my heart. That God alone is worth my life. No, not fame. Joshua Selman is only a man. A man that God has helped. When your reputation becomes bigger than you're promoting him. When your business becomes greater than your pro, when you are afraid of decreasing because you suspect that the honor will diminish, you suspect that the applause will diminish, then it will. But when he is lifted, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, this piece of earth, not real estate, if I be lifted up, that if you project men that when they see you, they see him. I should be able to look at you and see Christ and say, look at what God can do with a man. Not look at what man is doing with God. Look at what God can do with a man. These are the kinds of states that will make God swear over your life that you will never go down. For, for no reason, you will see God continue to lift you. And even you will try to find a reason and say, Lord, God will take someone's prayer request and give it to you as a gift. While someone is laboring on one side, your passion becomes a system of attraction. I've pledged and I've vowed in my life that anything that will ever come into this life that cannot be taken back by God should never come. Never. Never. And I mean it from the depth of my heart. Even as I'm standing here, I'm telling him again and he's hearing it. If this supposed reputation, all of these mundane things that continue to destroy our lives. Please hear me, my brothers and my sisters. Indoctrinate yourself into prioritizing God more than any other thing. Otherwise, you will make a fool out of your life. This lifetime is too small to be foolish. You must know what matters. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. And at the end of it, it must be God too. Alpha, Omega. Is God helping us tonight? That's why when, when Minister Efe was ministering, I, just, I, was, my, I was praying in my heart and said, Lord, let, let, let this open up our hearts and our lusts. You see, when God comes, one of the things that he does is to expose you to you. He will show you the truth. You will then see your lusts and your vulnerabilities. Not to condemn you, but to let you know that, listen, listen, the object behind this, your spirituality, is a corrupted motive. It's not all of me. I love him. I truly do. I love him. But he will ask you more than what? More than what? 
I love you more than what? And whatever you say you love him more than, you will test it. He really will. It's an uncomfortable truth, but he will test it until he finds himself. Tonight's message is very simple. It's a call. A call to a deeper dimension. A call to dissociate yourself from all the things that we build our reputation over. When he becomes the only object of your focus, then sit back and watch lifting that you have never seen. Sit back and watch the power of God upon your life in a way and manner that will scare you. Sit back and watch your life mentor generations when he finds you. When God searches for a man, he's not searching for a body. He's searching for your heart. My son, give me your heart. The epicenter where you store those desires. Give it to me. From beginning to the end, it will always be it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. It's not a song, it's a confession. That Jesus, you're the center. And everything falls around you Jesus this must be the anthem of a generation so from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart Tonight, I want you to bring out your alabaster box. Take your reputation and pour it like an offering into that box. Take your job that is the basis for your no time, no time. Pour it in that alabaster box. Also add your pain. Anything is allowed to enter. Take your sickness. Take the source of your discomfort. Turn everything into that alabaster box and bring it before his feet and break both the crowns and the thorns. Break it before his feet and tell him this is all about you. I continue to search my life every time to be sure nothing under any condition has been able to gain his place in my life. And, and I mean what I'm saying. Please, I want, you to, I want you to discern the truthfulness from whence I'm communicating this. This is not just a sermon. It's a call. It's a call. God is waking us up to say, Yes, be careful. Be careful. Your prayer requests continue to increase and your passion decreases. God, give me this. God, make me this. I must have this. I've had this one. Add this for me. And God is saying, look, there must come a time in your life when you throw your prayer request and say, Lord, where are you? Where are you? Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. And while you are singing that, a text just comes. Sorry, you were not given the job. And you add that text into the alabaster box. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand If it's not by your spirit Don't let me have it 
for everything I need truly if it's not in your presence let men talk they will talk anyway if it's not by your hand and if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it for everything And then the medical report comes. You just lost the baby, madam. You thought the 11th pregnancy will be the last one. You had a vision that it became a baby. And now the pregnancy is lost. And you're standing there wondering what to do. They've prophesied. They've said this. Lord, where are you? Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Here's the prayer. Listen. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. There's no space in my heart to keep a car. There's no space in my house to keep money, dollars, pounds. There's no space in my heart. My heart is too fragile for those objects. There's no space in my heart to keep ego. It was designed to carry the weight and the size of God. Tonight we are going to take a lot of things out. A lot of things. Efe taught us the song already. Let every other name fade away. Hold on. Do you know your car has a name? Both the one you bought and the one you are looking at. There is a name to it. I hope you know that the bank account you want or have has a name. When you say let every other name, don't think demons this night. Just, just leave them. Tomorrow is their day. But this night, let every other name may be the name of a beautiful lady who can even be here. Listen. Let every other name can be the name of an area where you must build a house. If not, I die. Let every other name can be the name of a wevon that must, must be upon your head. So when you say let every other name fade away, you are not saying it should leave you. You are saying I, I want my focus to be directed on just one person. One person. Why will I look at you dear Lord and look at something else? Why will I talk to two things at the same time? I'm talking to you and talking to my car. I'm talking to you and talking to my ego. You want my undivided attention. Your jealousy will not allow me to be that distracted. It is either you or nothing else. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away Till there's only you Let every other name fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart Let every other name fade away Let every other name fade away Till there's only you Let every other name fade away Listen, my brothers and my sisters In your mind tonight You're going to carry your ATM and put it on the ground Carry your CGPA, your results, place it on the ground Like the 20 and 4 elders 
you will take your golden crown i know you just got promoted but it must touch the ground if your promotion cannot touch the ground then it should be on a throne because that is your god it is either on the throne or on the ground when it comes to worship nothing else there, there are no two sides the elders don't just remove their crown they cast it i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before your glorious majesty i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before Now let me share with you a mystery as we round up. Everything that you put on the ground, the moment you start worshipping, it grows too. There is nothing that is on the ground that was a representation of your worth and your value that remains the same. When you drop your bank account, while you worship it grows when they brought the rod of aaron and they kept it in his presence the rod that had no root something began to happen it began to grow and bud i tell you how to fix what is not working lay it down lay it down lay it down carry your finances and lay it down carry your past and lay it down carry your cgp and lay it down Carry your ministry and lay it down. And then worship. Worship pain out of your life. Worship tears out of your life. Worship disappointment out of your life. And say, Lord, this is about you now. It is no longer about all of these things. No. I show you a secret. In all your ways, acknowledge him acknowledge him there is only one celebrity that stands in your room of worship the christ himself and as you lift that incense of worship suddenly you will find out that the things you would have focused on are no longer there you have been detached now listen when do you know why you feel safe depositing your money in a bank you're not friends with the manager you may not even know your account officer i will tell you why because of the ease of withdrawal say after me ease of withdrawal i know that if i put one million in so 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 and so bank even if it is 12 midnight when i come under normal circumstances as soon as i slot my card it should come so could there be a reason why it is difficult for god to reach down to you because you have not become like that ATM. When it is the same thing, when God is on his throne or when he's in your heart, then there is nothing, whatever is on the throne can also come to your heart. When the greatness on the throne can be safe in your heart and it all belongs to him, then let me tell you sincerely, the, the entire affluence and glory on the throne can be reproduced in your heart because either ways he still has unlimited access to it i can slot my atm card this night and punch some amount and it comes out can god come to your life punch that car will it go some of you will say wrong number. God says me. Say, I'm, I, I know what I'm saying. Put a lower figure and it will come out. Ah. Lord, whatever I cannot give you, please may it not come to my life. Whatever realm and dimension you will take me to that you will not be glorified, may I never get there. Let me tell you the truth. The uploads of men don't last. It is too short to waste your time around it.
Tonight, many of us are like the man who came to Jesus. You have done everything right. It may not be that you have done everything wrong, but the one thing that must happen tonight before we leave, the one thing, our lusts, our desires, they don't have to be demonic, but God fights anything that takes his place, even if he's the one that gave you. The moment it finds its way to your heart, it becomes his enemy. God can give you something today and fight it tomorrow. Don't you think because he gave you, he would not touch it. He gave Isaac and he called for it again. And Abraham took Isaac and he said, because you have done this, I swear that in blessing, I will bless you. Does God have the power to shut down your business? Does God have the power to relocate you to where he wants, not greener pastures? Does God have the power to keep you in a room for three days with no excuses? Does God have the right to cancel your ministerial schedule? Does God have the power over your account? Does God have the power over your relationship? Does God have the power over your ego and your reputation? Tonight, the part you have not given God is the part he wants this night. He doesn't want what you have given him before. He's looking for the one thing you have not given him. And I'm telling you, my brothers and my sisters, true freedom in your life will come when that happens. Are we together? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.